Welcome to this God-inspired message from Shofar Christian Church. Enjoy today's message. May you experience the presence of our Father and may you grow deeper in your relationship with Him. What a blessing it is to gather together in the presence of God. Um, yo, it's, uh, we, our David and I were talking about seasons this morning, <coughs> and uh, it's just one of those things that remind us so powerfully of the, the faithfulness of God, don't you think? How He sustains the whole universe and how, how steadfast everything is around us, um, even in creation. Such a blessing. I have the... Same guy, David, our uh, seven-year-old. He's, uh, <clears throat> they have this thing at school, which is extra. It's not part of the school fees and everything. It's after school. It's called robotics. It's amazing that the, what the kids do there. But it's, it's expensive. <laughs> so, so for a while, uh, David could only lo look um, in anticipation, and we d we did like a little tour the other day, and then we walked through this classroom where they do the robotics. And David looked at me and said, "Dad, yo, this is so cool. Can't we can't we manage this?" And I said to him, "You know, we have to pray. <laughs> we have to see." And then uh, it's so awesome because the, the Lord provided in an unexpected way, of ra randomly a family extended family. Um, Offered, we didn't ask. She just said she would. She heard about this, and she said she would like to pay for this. And uh, it's so cool to celebrate with David God's provision uh, for the little things, you know, that's uh, that on our hearts. But anyways, praise the Lord for that. So he's loving it, building all kinds of cool things with Legos and then programming them. But uh, yeah, I, I, he has to explain to me exactly what's going on there. <laughs> but it's awesome. God is faithful. Amen. Um, let's take a moment just to pray. Hallelujah, Father, we thank you for your word. Oh, thank you, Lord, for this amazing privilege to join together, together as believers, Lord, as the family of God, as the household of faith to draw near to you, Lord, as a small part of your bigger bride, your bigger body, Lord. But what a privilege, Lord, and we thank you for your presence here. We thank you, Lord, that you speak so powerfully and you minister and you impart life so powerfully through your word and that's our desire this morning we're not here for any man's opinion lord but we are here that you would minister to us that you would speak life into our lives into our hearts and that you would transform us into the image of your son and that your name would be glorified in our midst this morning in jesus name amen amen uh, I've, yo, this, what I want to talk about this morning is a lot of scriptures. I, I wanna, I'm not going to be able to read all of it, so I'm going to kind of fill in the gaps, okay, just to remind you of what, what was going on. And uh, we see right from the beginning, in the first couple of lines of Genesis, we see this powerful, right there, we get introduced to this, this concept that God plans and designs, and that He has a purpose, and he, he designs, and He plans, and He creates for a specific purpose. And, uh, you know, right from Genesis, we see this, we see this in the relationship that God has with man right in the beginning. But then we see this crazy thing happens. We see man deciding, wanting to go in another direction. We see the sin into the world. We see great destruction, you know, we see Tower of Babel, we see um, all this stuff happening. Before that, even the flood, we see all this destruction and, and evil coming through the, this the reality that we as humans have choice and have a will. Um, and then, you know, we see God bringing Noah and, and the ark, and, he, you know, he, he kind of starts anew. Um, and then... We look, and we see this thing happening where God cho chooses somebody like Abraham, who was a pagan guy, but he chooses him. You know, he, Abraham's faith uh, is accounted to him as righteousness, you know. And then it, 
you know, it, it, God prophesies. He says, he speaks over Arab, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And then <clears throat> we see this dynamic coming. We, God says that out of, out of the line of Abraham, the ultimate plan of redemption will come together. This, the actual, the Savior will come out of the line of Abraham. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> and um, so it carries on. So Abraham, first they can't have children. You know, then Isaac is born. It's, he's a miracle birth. He's, you know, uh, Sarah couldn't have children, but then she did. And Isaac is a miracle then um, Jacob and Esau come along. Esau is the el older one, but, but God chose Jacob. And then Jacob has 12 sons. They become the, the nation of Israel. They become you know, 12 tribes making up this nation. And out of these 12, the Redeemer would come, and specifically the tribe of Judah. And so if anything were to happen... <coughs> to these 12 tribes. If anything, specifically the tribe of Judah, if, if they had to be wiped out, then God's whole plan would fail. Isn't that right? So that would kind of be like, oh, that's weird. So, <clears throat> but, you know, but crazy things happen and we see how, you know, how God's plan of redemption and His, His bigger plan for, for creation continues throughout all of this stuff happening. And then we come to the life of Joseph. <coughs> I'm going to spend quite a lot of time with Joseph this morning. And uh, now let's just re recap a bit. Joseph is the favored son. He's not the eldest, but he's, he's actually one of the younger ones. And he is favored by his dad and hated by his brothers. Weird how that goes together. But anyway, so <laughs> his dad... He favors him, and his brothers don't like it. He has dreams. They don't like that either. He tells them his dreams, which is terrible, and, he, you know, they just hate him even more. And then, um, yeah, you remember, they decide they're going to sell this guy. They, first, they decide they're going to kill him. And then, they, and then at last minute, they change their plan. They make, make some money out of this thing, and they sell him as a slave. Uh, they tell his da their dad that he's been um, killed by an animal, wild animal, and um, <clears throat> and here becomes this. Here starts this journey of Joseph, which is a, quite a crazy journey. I'm just going to recap it for us. We can't read all of that scripture. Please go and read Genesis from about uh, from about 37 onwards. Um, so he gets sold as a slave, right? Then he he works as a slave in the in the house of. Um, uh, Potiphar, well, how do you pronounce that? Uh, Potiphar, and uh, he he does really well. The, the favor and blessing of God remain on his life. This is amazing to see. You know, he does really well. He gets appointed to a place of authority in the household. Stuff is looking up. Things are looking good. You know, he comes from being a proper slave to a place of authority. You must have been thinking, Hallelujah! I've done my time in the valley. This is it. The, the, the end of God is upon my life. <laughs> this is looking good. Just as things are looking better, he gets. He has this issue with the with his employer's wife. She, um, she's offended because he she he doesn't want to play along. She accuses him of rape or molestation or something in between. There, he gets put in prison for something he hasn't done. So now we, we, we just as things were looking up, just. So it just got worse. Now he's in prison. Um, again, the blessing and favor of God on his life, right? So he does really well. He he gets appointed to a place of authority, even as a prisoner, okay? Um, and then we see this thing where, again, things are looking good. He's in a place of authority. Like he's still a prisoner, okay? Fair enough. <laughs> but again, you know, he's, he's got favor on his life. He's being favored. He's being blessed. And... And he rises to place of uh, authority. Then we see this thing happening where these two um, guys from the king's court, the baker and the cupbearer, they are imprisoned kind of at a similar time. They both have dreams. Joseph interprets the dreams. Both of exactly what he said would happen happens. The baker 
executed, the cupbearer gets restored. The cupbearer on his way out tells him, listen, I'm not going to forget you. This is it. This is your chance. And that Joseph was saying, buddy, don't forget me. You know, we, we, we've got a plan now. You need to get me out of here. <laughs> I'm, I'm innocent, you know. And the sure as anything, just as things are looking up, the cupbearer forgets. He's just like, whatever. He forgets about poor Joseph. Joseph is still in prison for apparently, apparently at least another two years. All right. But can you see this roller coaster? He's doing so well. He's favored in his, own, in his own father's house. Then he gets sold as a slave. Then he does well. Then he gets falsely accused. Then he's in prison. So we see this roller coaster happening. But through all of this, God's purpose remains. Right? So what happens in this? Um, <clears throat> okay, okay. I'm going <laughs> to get to where I want to be. Uh, okay, so then finally something happens. Pharaoh has a dream. The cupbearer remembers this guy in prison that can do dreams, right? <laughs> they get him out of there. Uh, Joseph makes a very big, a particular point of saying that he can't do the dreams. God gives him the information. So he gives the glory to God. But then suddenly this thing turns around completely. And uh, he's put into a, ma a place of great authority to, in res to respond to, to the information that God gave through the dreams, okay? to deal with the situation. And um, and by this time, he's been away from, he's by the, you know, he was sold into slavery by, at the age of about 17. He's approaching 30 now. So this is already 13 years, right? So if you've been going through a difficult season, just uh, hang in there. <laughs> but uh, so he's approaching 13 years of kind of wrestling with what on earth is happening in my life. <laughs> What is God doing in my life? 13 years of, of wrestling, highs and lows, and looks like it's getting better, it gets worse. Um, and uh, I want to actually read this bit here. Okay, so yeah, so suddenly he's in this place of great authority. I want to read something that he writes before he sees, the, that he says, before he sees the big picture, uh, even the greater picture. In Genesis 41, 50, before the year of famine came, two sons were born to Joseph. So this was still where they were um, having, having surplus and they were storing away the food and the grain. Before the year of famine came, two sons were born to Joseph. Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, a priest of On, bore them to him. Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for he said, God has made me forget all my hardship and all my father's house. The name of the second he called Ephraim, for God has made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. And uh, I can imagine at this point, um, Joseph was starting to see that through all of his affliction, through all of those hectic things he's been going through, there was a plan. But at this point, he hadn't even seen the big plan, because it was only about nine years after the Pharaoh had those dreams that his brothers came, that, that his father sent his brothers to look for, come and look for, buy, to come and buy grain. So that's, that's 22 years now, right? So this plan is not a 13-year plan, it's a 22-year plan. <laughs> so only then he must have seen, now lights are going on. This is what God has purposed right from the start. This is God's plan right from the start. Um, and uh, and it's interesting to see that God has this nation, these 12 tribes that he has that will carry his name and are from which you know, the, the Savior will come, but then he brings them right to the edge of destruction. There's this massive famine, okay, which is threatening their survival. So this is a very good chance they're going to die. All of them are going to die of hunger. <laughs> so he brings them right to the edge of destruction. And then he, in this huge way, God glorifies himself by saving them from destruction. And I think if this is one of the weird things about Scripture that we have to get our heads around, is that God's glory is his priority. His own glory, not our glory. 
And as soon as we can get our heads around the fact that everything around us is meant to glorify God, ourselves included, I think that's going to do a lot for understanding Him. Amen? So He, he brings them to the edge of destruction, and then he, he, he saves them in a spectacular way, and His name is glorified. And I want to... Now, what I want to get to is this challenging dynamic that we see lots of bad things happen, but we see God's plan in it. Okay, then this is the thing that's very challenging to us. Um, and even, I want to read this bit here from Genesis 50. Now, this was when Joseph's dad, when, when Jacob died. Okay, because up to this point, uh, the brothers were amazed that Jacob, uh, that Joseph is forgiving them. He's not having them be put to death or anything. And they're like still a bit cautious. <laughs> but now Joseph, Jacob's dead. Now they think, well, you know, now, now he's, he's going to just uh, flat. He's just going to wipe them out because he's still upset with them. Um, let's read. Um, so they send, they, they fake a message from their dad saying to Joseph, please forgive, forgive the transgressions of your brothers. <laughs> so they're like just pulling out all the stops. They just want to make sure that Joseph doesn't, uh, doesn't retaliate now. And then verse 19 from Genesis 15, he says, But Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. Um, so Joseph is seeing this thing, but the, the, the challenging bit here is that they said that as for you, you meant it, you meant evil against meant. The word used there is, is a kind of a, it means to, to weave, to, you know, you, you had a plan and you were weaving this thing and you were making it work for evil. That's the, that was the brother's plan. And they use this, it, you, the same word for when we say God meant it for good. So this is the challenging part because it means that this is not something that God used for good. This is, this is often where it gets a bit tricky. Uh, we say, you know, stuff is meant for evil and then God uses it for good, which happens a lot. But in this specific case, he says God planned it that way right from the beginning. Jo Joseph got those dreams before any th of this stuff happened, right? The dreams about his brothers bowing before him, the dreams about many people bowing before him. Um, God, they wove it and they made it, they manipulated for evil, but God was doing the same for his purpose and his plan. So here's, here's, the, here's the rub here that it seems, and I want to actually, let us let a bunch of scriptures around this, but it seems, and it's, it becomes so clear that God is able to direct the hearts and the actions of evil men to do His will. Okay? And He's, he's able to direct all of this in a way that will bring glory to His name and that will fit into His plan for eternity. Okay? I'm going to read from uh, Genesis 41. Um, where, we, where, the, where it becomes so clear, it's, it's almost a bit scary. Actually, let's read first Psalm 105, and then I'll get back to Genesis 41. <clears throat> Psalm 105. When he summoned a famine on the land, this is speaking about God. When he summoned a famine on the land and broke all supply of bread, he had sent a man ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. His feet were hurt with fetters. His neck was put in a collar of iron until what he had said came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. Until what he had said came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. We're going to get back to that in a moment, that, that moment between, that difficult period between what the Lord said, the promise, and it actually coming to pass, that difficult season. We're going to get to that now. But let's look at Genesis 41. So it's clear here that God summoned the famine. God broke the supply of bread, but he had sent somebody ahead. Can you see how this is like, what? Uh, and then verse, let's look at Genesis 41, 25. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, 
The dreams of Pharaoh are one. There are two dreams, remember? God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. This is God doing this. The seven good cows are seven years. It goes and explains it a bit. It was told, um, verse 28, it is as I told Pharaoh, God has shown to Pharaoh what he is about to do. It talks about the seven plenty, years of plenty, seven years of famine. And then verse 32, he says, And the doubling of Pharaoh's dream means that the thing is fixed by God, and God will shortly bring it about. So he's leaving no confusion here for us. <laughs> if it was one time, we could have said, no, nah, we could interpret this differently. But he says here three or four times, this, this is what God is doing right now. He's bringing it about. He's making it happen. And he has a plan. And his purpose remains, even though this is such a challenging situation, God is right there in it, and his name will be glorified in it. Amen? Okay, so... <clears throat> so let's get to the difficult part. So when, when G Joseph was a young boy already, he had these dreams... He had these dreams about his brothers bowing before him in, in, and a lot of other people bowing before him. We see all of that coming to pass, okay? But this is the difficult part, is between those promises, between the time those dreams came, between the time of God prophesying over your life, or a word, giving you a word or something in your life, between that time of the promise and then the actual culmination of the promise, the actual happening, the actual, when, it, when all of it comes together, what happens there? What happens in that season? We have a word from God. We've got, you know, promises of God. We've received scripture. We've received prophecies. But what happens in between? And this is often the difficult parts of our faith walk is, I'm, I have got these amazing promises, but right now I'm seeing zero of this stuff. Joseph had those dreams, powerful dreams, not only one, a couple of them. And now he's a slave. He's like, Lord. And it's so great for us to have hindsight, but he didn't have hindsight. <laughs> he was a slave. It's probably the worst thing he could have been at that point on the planet. And... Uh, what, do you, what does he do with that? How do we handle those moments? How, how do we handle those seasons where everything goes wrong? And, the, and everything, every time it looks like things are looking up, it just gets worse. And where is this promise of God? Where is, this, this, where is the, the substance of the things that, that God had him dream about? You know, it looks up again, it looks better, and then it gets worse. He gets, um, so I, I want to challenge us this morning that while we are waiting for, on God to fulfill His purpose, there's a lot of things that we need to wrestle through with Him. And uh, look, it doesn't, the, the, the Scripture doesn't give us detail about the state of Joseph's heart. And the, the stuff that he wrestled through. But I can imagine that there must have been dark moments there. I mean, um, it doesn't give us detail. But what we do see is he, he, he finds himself in these extremely challenging situations. And somehow, he, his heart remains soft to the point when he actually sees his brothers, he's able to just forgive them. <laughs> So that tells me that all through all of this, he stays in, also we see that he stays in tune with the voice of God. He's still able to hear God's voice. He's still discerning God's will. He's able to interpret. He's able to hear when God tells him exactly what the dreams mean. So that means he's, he's still in a place with God where he hears God's voice. He's sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And he's still he's submitted and yielded to the plan of God for his life. Can you see how powerful that is? That even in that crazy roller coaster of things just going worse and worse, his heart remains in a place where, he, uh, where he's faithful to God. So in that place of wrestling, in that in-between stage, 
there's grace for us to remain faithful. Amen. We see in his, in his life that, we, that there, he demonstrates this courage to stick with his convictions. <laughs> um, in the place of in-between, God gives us grace to, to have this courage. He, he gives us the power by the Spirit to, to have the courage to continue in, this, in our convictions. Um, while we're waiting on God to fulfill His purpose... We should continue, we can continue to trust in the, the plan that God has and that the plan that He has set before us. And I want to, guys, let's, let's make it a bit more practical. In that moment where you have been sold, literally sold out <laughs> by those closest to you, maybe there's somebody like that here this morning, you feel like those that are closest to you have, have betrayed you. In that moment, in that difficult season, know that God's plan remains. We pray that it's not going to be 22 years. <laughs> but know that in that moment, His plan remains. In that moment where false accusations come against you, false claims, accusations of, of the worst kind, in, this, in his case, accusations that ended, landed, him, landed him in prison. In the dark place, God's plan remains. Amen? And his purpose remains. And um, maybe it's a situation at work where you've been accused of stuff. Maybe it's a situation where, you know, people are telling lies about you and... You you like looking for where's God in this thing? How is this possible? This is not fair. This is not this is not uh, even this is not you know fair in any way. And it ne ne never mind fair. This is not just. How often do we face unjust situations and we're looking for God? Where's God in this situation? Know that His promise remains and His plan remains, and He gives us the grace to keep our hearts in a place where we are able to stay in step with the Spirit and in step with the plan that He has for His glory. Amen? Not for our glory, for His glory. He gives us the grace to continue to allow the Spirit of God to direct our steps, even in the worst of seasons, even in the darkest of valleys. Okay, So He's put in prison, even in the place where you feel you are in a, you're imprisoned in some way, you, you, you're not doing what you want to do, you... you um, you feel confined um, in a place where you feel this is the darkest possible valley. God is not forgotten. The cup bearer it may have forgotten, but God is not forgotten. I mean, His purpose remains. His presence remains. His peace remains. And His grace remains for us to continue to, to engage with the Holy Spirit, to continue to hear His voice even in the worst of seasons. I'm always so encouraged when I think around the, this, the Psalm 23, the, the picture of the shepherd taking us. And uh, yes, he takes us from a place where there are green pastures and, and still waters. But then he takes us to the worst place, the shadow of the valley of the shadow of death. He takes us to the, the worst kind of places. He takes us to the places that look and feel a lot like hell, right? <laughs> Pastor Fred always used to say, when you're going through hell, when you're experiencing these rough things, don't stop there. It's a good tip, right? Don't, don't pause there. Don't camp there. <laughs> Stay, stick with the shepherd. Because it's in the rough periods that we are most tempted to, to say, this isn't working out for me. This is not comfortable anymore. I, I don't know, maybe this shepherd following thing is not so cool after all. But it's exactly in those seasons that we need to stick to him even closer than the good seasons, I mean. So that we can follow him out of the valley of the shadow of death, that we can follow him through the difficult path, through the rough spots, to the place of green pastures. And the, the powerful thing we see in Psalm 23, I don't know if it's here this morning, uh, but he, he ends with us being in the presence of the Father. That is the destination. There's the rough parts and the difficult valleys are part of the journey. 
but we are heading towards a place w that is not a pl we're not heading towards a place we're heading towards a person i mean and it ends with us having a banquet with 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 the lord prepares a banquet for us in the face of our enemies in the face of everything that has come against us there's a place of god hosting us with his glory and his presence and his his overflowing goodness and he ends with his saying that surely the goodness and mercy of the Lord will follow me all the days of my life. You know, and he, uh, isn't this, this powerful picture that we go through the difficult things? We go through the difficult valleys. We continue to follow the shepherd because we know the destination. We know that the Father is a good Father. And we know that He has gone before us. And we know that He will give us the grace to stick it out until we see those promises come to pass. Amen. Even through the dark valley where nothing is visible of those promises and those dreams. Okay. I want to close. Um, guys, maybe you find yourself in a situation where this uh, dark valley has been quite long. Or maybe you're in a situation where you feel a bit like Joseph, that this, it's, it's 13 years, but actually it's, it's closer to 22 years, you know. It's, <laughs> um, it's getting rough. And my prayer for us this morning is that we will be able to testify as Joseph did. Even before he's, he met with his brothers again, he made this declaration and he named his sons how powerful is this this he names his sons in a way that would remind him on a daily basis of what god has done he's like let me not forget this let me just name my son every time i say his name i'm remembering what god has done and he, how powerful is he, he says uh, he names the one Manasseh, and he says, For God has made me forget all my hardship, all my father's house, and all those hardship that he's gone through, he, God has brought him through it. Amen. The second son, Ephraim, For God has made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. Out of the place of the worst stuff that I could have gone through, God has made me fruitful. And he has made me prosper in that. And this is the difficult part, is we don't see that when we're in that dark place. Amen? And we don't see that when we're in that place of, in that, imp in that prison, in that place of um, being sold out, in that place of lies and accusations. We don't often see that. But my prayer for us today is that we would be faithful in those difficult seasons. Um, one of the key things for us, you're in the in-between stage. And the in-between stage can be a day or it can be, in his case, 20-odd years, all right? But in that in-between stage, one of the most important things that we need to do is we need to cast our cares upon Jesus because he cares for us. That those cares do not weigh us down, that they will not destroy you know, bind us to the past, that we will not get stuck in a place of bitterness and unforgiveness, that we will not get stuck somewhere where we become useless to God and we will we, we, get, we will actually get anchored in the hell part of the valley of the shadow of death and we can't get out of there, amen? So that that casting of our cares upon Christ is so crucial for us to remain in a place of thanksgiving, remain in a place of praise, you know, even in this season we're in now, we, the whole worldwide stuff is on, the, on its head. Weird things are happening. Things nobody could see coming. But we know that above all of this, God's plan of redemption remains. And He will glorify His name. And as we yield to that plan, we're going to be part of Him glorifying His name. Amen? What a privilege. Let's stand this morning. We're going to pray together. even when it seems like everything is conspiring against us, even sometimes it feels like nature is conspiring against us, let us remember 
that in the worst of storms, Jesus is still the one who speaks to the waves and the, and the seas. He's still the one. What does that song say? The, the wind and waves still know his name. He's the one that quietens the storm. He's the one that has authority on the, all, over all of this. The sovereignty of God that we see in this story of Joseph is scary. It's a little bit difficult to get our heads around it because God has planned all these very difficult things that imp at an implication of million, on millions of lives, right? It was part of his plan, and this is difficult for us. But I want to encourage us, in the same way that it's difficult for us, it should be encouraging for us to know that no matter what we face, no matter what's going on in the world, we can have a confidence in the fact that he is sovereign and that he is good and that his plan of redemption remains and that he has, he has demonstrated his love for us through Jesus. And, and the whole account of Jesus and the cross is, is similar to Joseph's account, right? Hectic stuff happening to bring about the purpose of God, to bring about the greatest moment of redemption the world has ever seen, to bring about the cross and the resurrection for the redemption of all mankind. I mean, let's pray this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we, we humbly come this morning. We thank you for your word, God. We thank you, Lord, that, yes, Lord, that we can, we can acknowledge this morning we don't, we don't see what you see, Lord. We, we don't have your wisdom. We don't have your foresight. We, we only, we're stuck in this moment of time, Lord, and we pray by your grace that, that you'd enable us, Lord, to trust you, Lord, because you see the beginning from the end. And you see every part of history, even long before, when you wrote it down, Lord, you, you've already seen it and known it. So we humbly come and we yield, Lord, to your wisdom and to your plan. We humbly come and we say, God, let, let your kingdom come in and through our lives, Lord. We humbly come and we yield to your great purpose of redemption, your great purpose that will bring glory to your name. Lord, I, I, pray, I pray for every person in this place, every person listening that is in that place of darkness, that is maybe in that dark valley right now, that is maybe in that place of betrayal right now, experiencing betrayal of the worst kind, maybe having accusations coming against them, maybe having lies being told about them right now. We pray for your great grace, Lord, to cover those hearts right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you. I pray for every person that is going through the valley of the shadow of death right now. We pray, Lord, that you would strengthen the each one with might by your spirit in the inner man. Lord, that you would strengthen hands and knees, that you'd strengthen body, soul, and spirit. And we thank you, Father, for grace for us to keep our eyes on you, Lord, to keep on finding our strength in you, Lord, to keep our hearts soft to hear your voice, to keep our hearts soft and free from bitterness and, and so much else that wants to hold us back, Lord that wants to bind us to the past. Lord, that you would deliver us from each of those in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, this morning for soft hearts to respond to you. And if I just sense right now, if you are wrestling with something and you know that if you don't let go of this thing, it's going to bind you in that place, in that dark valley, and you won't be able to go through it. I just sense right now the Holy Spirit is convicting some people of things that you need to yield to God. Maybe it is somebody you need to forgive. Maybe it's something you need to lay down. Maybe it's something that, something that has happened. Maybe, some, maybe this, some of this betrayal or lies or false accusations that you need to just lay down at the cross right now. Say, Lord, I yield this to you in the name of Jesus. And if you need to forgive somebody right now, just ask for grace. Just just where you're at, just speak to God for a moment. Say, Lord, I yield this to you. Give me grace to forgive. Give me grace to move on. Give me grace to, to rid my heart of bitterness. Deliver me, Lord. 
In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord, that, that we can look to you and we can boldly say, Lord, let your name be glorified in our lives, in the dark places, in the high points, in the low points. Let your name be glorified. Give us the grace, like the sons of Issachar, that we would know the times and the seasons, Lord, that we would be able to see and know and embrace your plan and purpose in every season, Lord, even when we don't see the big picture, even when we don't see all of it. We, our desire, Lord, is to do your will, God, in the name of Jesus. I just sense there's some, Lord, that need wisdom in big decisions, Lord, this week. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you would give grace for them to find time in your presence, Lord, to seek your face, to, to receive godly wisdom from you, to receive words of knowledge, words of wisdom from you for very real, very practical things, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you that you are in the detail, Lord, and we can trust you for your guidance, for your direction, for your will, for your plan, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let your name be glorified. As every eye is closed, if you're here this morning and you have not yet stepped into a relationship with God, you have not yet responded to His invitation of becoming a son and a daughter in his house, or if you know if you've not yet laid down your life, if you know that you're not right with him, and you know that that you need his forgiveness, I have good news this morning. As every eye, every every eyes closed, the heads are bowed. Jesus has paid the price for your sin and on your behalf, and for each one of us, He's paid that price. And if you this morning want to pray with me and want to respond to God's invitation to receive eternal life and to be restored into a real relationship with Him. It would be my awesome privilege to pray with you. Well, if there's anybody like that, would you just slip up your hand? I'd love to pray with you this morning. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for your word. And we ask that even as we go from this place, Lord, let your name be glorified in our lives. And let your kingdom come, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks for your time and your patience. Thanks for listening to this message from Shofar Christian Church. We believe that you enjoyed your time with us, establishing God's kingdom and His glory in your life. For more info, call us on 012-362-1363. Email us, pretoria at shofaronline.org. Browse our website, www.shofaronline.org. Or like us on facebook.com forward slash shofarpretoria.